Are you kidding me? If you're watching this video, you are probably thinking about starting a record collection. And in this video, I'm gonna share why it is the last thing you should be doing right now. These are five reasons it's a terrible idea. Take it from me, someone who has been collecting records for over 25 years. Okay, first, let me throw a disclaimer in there. I love vinyl. I love collecting records. And while I absolutely love it, there are some definite drawbacks and major, major cons. You should avoid it at all costs. Number one, limited availability and selection. While vinyl's popularity has increased in recent years, it still has a smaller market share compared to digital formats and even other formats like CDs. This can result in limited availability and selection of certain albums, especially for niche or less popular music genres and bands. Yes, part of the joy can be the hunt, but the scarcity of some records is downright frustrating. It's painstaking and, I mean, honestly, agonizing. It hurts. Case in point, this here is Camera Obscura. I love this band. I have all of their records except for one, their first. Biggest Blue is Hi-Fi. It was pressed to 1,000 copies. You can't find it anywhere. They've teased reissuing it, but that was years ago and who knows if it's ever gonna happen. I want it, but I don't wanna spend $350 to get it. Number two, fragility and maintenance. Vinyl records are delicate and susceptible to damage. Extremely susceptible. Scratches, warps, dust, all of these things can affect sound quality, requiring proper care and maintenance. That can take time and money and effort. Regular cleaning and handling precautions are absolutely necessary to preserve the lifespan of all of your records. In fact, one of my biggest boundaries is other people touching my records. It gives me extreme anxiety and I have to explicitly tell them in order to hold my wax, they must abide by some very, very personal rules. Handling my records improperly will irrefutably damage the friendship or relationship. This record right here is by a little band called The Moodists. I picked this up some time ago. It's not necessarily my favorite record. It's a single and I like it, but at the same time, I could take it or leave it. One thing that just grates on me, sometime last year, I pulled it out, I set it up on my shelf like these records behind me and it slipped out of my hands. It fell straight down onto the floor. When I pulled that record out, it cracked, as you can see. Number three cost. Collecting vinyl records can be an extremely expensive hobby. New releases and limited editions come with premium price tags and rare or sought after records like that one I mentioned earlier by Camera Obscura can fetch extremely high prices in the secondhand market. Investing in a quality turntable and audio equipment can add to your overall cost as a collector. As the popularity of vinyl has returned, the price of all of this has just increased. 20 years ago, a new record setting you back 20 bucks seemed quite steep. Now, one under 20 seems wildly inexpensive. Most new albums will set you back $30 at the very least, and that's in US money. This right here is a copy of Julian Baker's Sprained Ankle from I think about 2015 or so. This album is beautiful. I love the color, limited to just 150 copies, and it ran me well over $50, despite it having about 30 different variants, different colored pressings, other limited runs, all of that kind of stuff. Why did I choose to get this? I don't really know. I really like the album. I love it. It's a great piece of my collection. It's one of those that I really cherish, but I probably overspent for it. I could have gotten something that looked just as cool, had four to five times the number pressed and cost four to five times less. Number four, storage and space requirements. I mean, look at this wall behind me. Vinyl records take up physical space requiring adequate storage solutions to prevent damage and deterioration. And as collections grow, 
finding sufficient space can become a little challenging, especially for those of you with limited living arrangements. When I moved to Texas, I had 30 boxes, 30 boxes of LPs and seven inch singles. That's a lot of space to move. The anxiety of having them move from Washington State to Texas, that was a lot of anxiety. I'm always running out of space, something my wife absolutely hates. I mean, look at this collection. It's massive, there's so many pieces. Number five, inconvenience of portability. Vinyl records are not portable, they're not Convenient. Carrying around a large collection of records can be impractical, cumbersome, or <laughs> impossible, especially while traveling. Additionally, the need for a turntable and speakers restricts the location where vinyl can be played. Unlike digital music that can be accessed on various devices and carried in your pocket. I've picked up records while traveling and bringing them back home is always difficult. Not just that, it requires dedicated space to actually listen to the records. Suitcase players are frankly shit. What should you do? Should you start a collection or should you avoid it at all costs? Collecting records can be extremely satisfying. It can be a fun experience, it can be an investment, providing superior sound quality with a great setup, tangible aesthetics, and a sense of nostalgia. However, all of the things I mentioned previously, there's all these limitations, the cost, the fragility, the storage requirements. Balancing the pros and cons can help you determine if it might be something you wanna do. In a future video, I will share my top five reasons to start a collection, going against the grain of what I've just covered here. So don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. If you're Thinking of diving in anyway and starting a collection, check out this video right here where I give you my five tips on buying records online. Thanks for listening. I am Andy and I'll see you next time.